Thank you all for joining us this morning. I'm pleased to be here with the Secretary of State for California, Alex Padilla. I am Javier Becerra, the Attorney General for our great state. Uh, we're here to convey a, a very simple message. If you're not counted, then you don't count. And in California, everyone should count. Today, we're here to say exactly that, that we don't take anyone in our state for granted because they all work hard, they all make life better, and without each and every person who lives in our state, we would lose out on the things that we consider precious to our family and to our lives. Because by being counted, you count in making sure that California gets its fair share. Late last night, in fact, in the dead of night, before the clock ran out, we heard that the Trump administration made another reckless decision that threatens not just immigrant families in our state, but all of us in the state of California. In filing a lawsuit today against the federal government and Secretary Ross at the Department of Commerce, we are simply trying to convey a very simple message. We want everyone to count. And so within hours of the Trump administration making a very reckless decision to include in the census questionnaire a question on citizenship, we acted before the day had ended to file our lawsuit against the Trump administration. This is something we do because everyone in California, as I said, counts. Every person who uses our highways or our mass transit system counts. Everyone who relies on our government, federal, state, and local to be there when a natural disaster strike counts. Everyone who needs to have the emergency responder there during a public health crisis counts. Every one of us who has a child getting ready to go to school, start kindergarten, and wanting to know the size of the classrooms that will confront the child and whether it will be possible to learn counts. Every person who wants a voice in our government counts. The Constitution requires the federal government to count everyone in our country, everyone. The Constitution requires that the federal government conduct an actual enumeration, those are the words of the Constitution, of the total population of this country, regardless of citizenship status. And since 1790, the census has counted citizens and non-citizens alike. As I said, late last night, when the clock was about to expire, it seems that the Trump administration made a decision and announced it would add this question about citizenship to the 2020 census. Given the way that this administration has attacked immigrants, you can understand why immigrant families would be afraid to fill out the census questionnaire. Right here where we are speaking, at the California Museum, you can see a whole exhibit on why immigrant families would hesitate to return the census questionnaire form. During World War II, the federal government used census data to identify Japanese American families to send them to internment. But the Trump administration has yet again failed to learn from history. They failed to consider the consequences of scaring people into not filling out the census forms. An undercount resulting from this decision would jeopardize vital services for all Californians. It would also jeopardize our representation in government. Adding a question on citizenship threatens to derail the integrity of the entire process. This latest move by the Trump administration to threaten California is not just a bad idea, it's against the law. 
So that's why, within hours of the Trump administration making a decision to add a citizenship question to the census questionnaire, my team at the California Department of Justice filed a lawsuit against the Trump administration. In our lawsuit, we argue that this decision by the Trump administration violates the Constitution and federal law. First, the Constitution requires, as I said before, the actual enumeration of all people in every state every 10 years. By including a citizenship question, which will diminish response rates, the census will not be able to fulfill its constitutional duty to count everyone. Second, the Trump administration has violated the Administrative Procedure Act, the APA, which prohibits arbitrary and capricious agency actions. We look forward to making our case in court against the Trump administration and making sure that all Californians are counted and that we maintain their voice in government. This is not our first trip to the rodeo. We've done this before. And I, I believe that Isaac Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, had it right some time ago when he said, for every action, there is a reaction. Clearly, when the Trump administration decided to take action late last night, California reacted. But I will tell you that I think in this case, what we're finding is that the Trump administration seems to be constantly reacting against a state, California, that has decided to be the leader in our country when it comes to pioneering better ways, new ways to do things to the point that we have become the sixth largest economy in the world. We're not going to stop, and we're going to defend every one of our rights to make sure that every one of our people who's worked hard to make California the sixth largest economy in the state is counted. With that, let me turn it over now to our Secretary of State, Alex Padilla. Thank you uh, to our Attorney General Becerra uh, for your bold action and swift action last night. You know, the Trump administration's decision last night rolls back the clock on civil rights and voting rights in America. And sadly, it's just our latest effort to sabotage the already underfunded and understaffed and leaderless census. Questioning the citizenship status of every person in America is unfortunately just a continuation of the President's blatant agenda to fan the flames of anti-immigrant hostility in our nation. Recall that at the outset of his campaign for President of the United States, he demonized Mexican immigrants, calling them rapists, drug dealers, and murderers. He's offended and insulted immigrants from Central American and African countries, referring to their native countries in words that are beyond derogatory. He's discriminated against immigrants and refugees from predominantly Muslim countries with his unconstitutional travel bans. And he's cold-heartedly torn families apart with his deportation orders, which are harsh and inhumane. And now, in one fell swoop, the Department of Commerce has ignored its own protocols, its own years of preparation, and decades upon decades of common sense bipartisan policy in a concerted effort to suppress a fair and accurate census count from our diverse communities. That this administration would claim that adding the question is simply them seeking to enforce the Voting Rights Act is not just laughable. It's contemptible. We need only look at the administration's deplorable record as it pertains to voting rights. Trump's Department of Justice has completely reversed positions on numerous key voting rights cases. 
Trump established an advisory commission, a fraud commission, premised on a baseless accusations of massive voter fraud in America. The commission was such a farce, he was forced to disband it earlier this year. And we know Trump has appointed to a number of key positions individuals who have championed voter suppression policies their entire careers. Trump has even failed to acknowledge Russian interference with the 2016 elections, let alone do something to hold the Russian government accountable. Enough is enough. As the Attorney General said, California values our diverse population, which includes immigrant communities throughout the state of California. We know that immigrants contribute to our economy. We know that immigrants serve admirably in our military. Immigrants are embedded in the very fabric of this state. California counts on immigrants. And in the 2020 Census, we will make sure immigrants are counted, not intimidated. Since day one of this administration, Californian have been unafraid and unabashed to fight for our rights and to defend our values. We fought his travel bans. We fought his fraud commission. And I'm proud to work with Attorney General Becerra to fight this decision in the courts. We're ready to fight, and we're ready to win. And uh, if I may, a few words in Spanish uh, as well before we take questions. Agregando una pregunta sobre ciudadanía, en el censo solo sirve para provocar el sentimiento anti-inmigrante en este país. Como candidato igual como presidente, Trump seguido ha insultado y ofendido inmigrantes de México, Centroamérica, África y otros países. Y sus órdenes de deportar han dividido a miles de familias. Ahora, el Departamento de Comercio elige ignorar sus mismas pólizas de más de 50 años con su esfuerzo de silenciar nuestras comunidades diversas en el próximo censo. La justificación de la administración de querer proteger el derecho a votar es claramente solo un pretexto. Y ya basta. California valora nuestras uh, comunidades diversas, su población diversa, incluyendo la comunidad inmigrante en este estado. En el, centro, en el censo del 2020, vamos a asegurar que los inmigrantes cuentan en el censo. Estoy orgulloso de trabajar junto con el fiscal general Javier Becerra para defender nuestros derechos y nuestros valores. Lo hemos hecho antes y lo vamos a seguir haciendo. Estamos listos para luchar y listos para ganar. Gracias. We'll take questions. Can you also do uh, your statement, just a short statement in, in Spanish about the suit? Sure. Hoy anunciamos que estamos entregando una demanda contra la administración del presidente Trump, porque otra vez vemos ataques contra nuestra comunidad inmigrante. Es importante que sepa cada familia migrante que es importante que participen en el censo que viene en el año 2020, porque si no, se, si no es contado esa familia, perdemos todos, no solo la familia, en los recursos que deben de venir aquí en California, en el apoyo y la representación que merece la comunidad eh, en el Congreso y en la legislatura. Y tenemos que mandar el mensaje bien claro que aunque la administración del presidente Trump ataca a las familias migrantes, nosotros estamos aquí parados junto con el secretario de Estado Alex Padilla de California y yo y muchos más de California listos para luchar, para defender cualquier familia migrante porque ellos deben ser contados y por eso anoche después de unas horas de que escuchamos que la administración de Trump decidió incluir en el censo una pregunta sobre ciudadanía nosotros aquí en California entregamos la demanda 
que trata de poner amparo a esa clase de acción que pone en peligro la participación de nuestra comunidad migrante. Vamos a defender los derechos de los, las familias migrantes porque queremos defender los derechos del pueblo de California. Gracias. Uh, questions. The the Census Bureau has been able to acquire the information it needs uh, about the people of this country in many different forms, including citizenship. But it's become very clear over the last decades that to include a question about citizenship, specifically in the form that most, the questionnaire that uh, everyone completes, could jeopardize the participation of folks who might question the reason for being asked about citizenship. And certainly we know that for many people in this country, as a result of a broken immigration system, there are many individuals who might fear participating in the census if a question about citizenship is asked. The, uh, these families may not understand how the census information might be used, whether the information would be private, and the result might be that rather than participate on something that's crucial, not for just themselves and their family, but for our state and for the nation, that they would choose not to, which would undermine the credibility of the census and undermine the ability for us to tr distribute our taxpayer dollars uh, thoroughly throughout the country and also to have the representation uh, in elected bodies that we need. Are there any estimates in the lawsuit about the uh, <coughs> amount of funding that, that could be lost, the amount of representation California could lose, I mean, not just in Congress, but the, the, the level of undercount? Uh, you can look back at some of the censuses that have been done where we have done estimates of, and uh, they have done surveys to try to figure out the actual count. And you can find that uh, if we don't do an accurate census, you, when you're talking about uh, a several percentage point or even a few percentage point differential between the actual count of people in the country and what, what the census reveals, could translate into several million people not being counted. If those individuals are distributed in particular states, those states will lose out on not just a representation, but on the resources that their taxpayers are contributing. And so no one should find themselves uh, sending their kids to schools with larger class sizes because this, the state is not receiving the funding it should under the census formulas that drive dollars to these states and to these classrooms. No one should find that their emergency response uh, system is inadequate because the federal government is not providing that state or that locality with the funding it deserves because the census has an undercount and didn't recognize how many people really were in that jurisdiction and deserve to have federal taxpayer resources go to help in that natural disaster. I, I think it, it's worth emphasizing here that, um, yes, it has been more than half a century since uh, a citizenship question was in the decennial census, right? The Census Bureau conducts other surveys uh, over time, separate from the decennial census, where they get the data that they need for policy making, et cetera. The decennial census is unique in, in that the data drives not just the federal funding formulas, which, yes, could be billions with an undercount in California, uh, but also the reapportionment process and the redistricting process. Reapportionment uh, potentially you know, diminishing our voice in Congress if it costs us congressional seats. And if, it, 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 if we're forced to redistrict with incomplete uh, population data, now we're also compromising voting rights because it's one person, one vote in the United States of America. But the reason it hasn't been asked in more than 50 years is because presidents, both Republican and Democrat, Census directors appointed by both Republican and Democratic administrations have agreed that the effect of a citizenship question on the decennial census has the effect of discouraging or intimidating non-citizens from participating. So this isn't just a guess. This isn't just speculation. This is based on historical practice. Uh, and it is impossible to ignore the intent by the President of the United States. That's why I laid out his rhetoric as a candidate. Uh, his rhetoric and actions as President of the United States clearly anti-immigrant 
And uh, clearly his decision here on the census question for the 2020 census uh, is consistent with that uh, harmful agenda, not just for California, but especially for California. No, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's a blatant and transparent agenda. If through a uh, census undercount, California loses a seat or two or more in Congress, it literally diminishes our voice in our federal government and compromises our fair representation that's called for in the Constitution uh, and in federal law. That's exactly what's at stake here. I could, if I could just mention, um, having served in Congress for over 20 years, I can remember many votes that came down to that final vote. The Affordable Care Act came down to a final vote. Uh, Medicare prescription drug coverage came down to a final vote. If California loses representation, we could lose votes. And at the same time, in my congressional district that I served in before, there were more than 700,000 people. If we lose a district, that means more than 700,000 people will be pushed into other districts, and therefore their voice and their vote will be diluted because we will have one less representative to try to represent those folks, and that would be unfair to the state of California. So the consequences are real, and the more you look into this, the more you recognize that it's unnecessary because we've learned the art and the science of making a good count we don't need to undermine it by including a question which is clearly uh, meant to try to drive certain populations away from completing the form. So this is another jab at California with the Trump administration? It's, uh, it's, yeah, plain and simple. California is the most populous state in the nation, the most diverse state in the nation. We're home to the, the most hard to count communities. Uh, of any state in the nation, including the largest immigrant population of any state in the nation. When we lose funding, when we lose congressional represent representation, uh, we lose big if Trump is successful in adding this question on the census. So we're going to fight it tooth and nail. Angela estaba preguntando. Beyond, thank you, uh, Attorney General, beyond uh, uh, people potentially not participating in the count, do you have concerns that sensitive information might be we, we've gone through that exercise and that concern. Um, I think we still believe in the institutions of government. While some of the individuals who are in our government may not be as trustworthy, I believe we've uh, been able to have confidence in our institutions of government. The census is a completely confidential process where that information is not to be shared except for the purposes outlined by law. And it's important that people who are concerned about completing a census understand that the census is not to be used uh, in ways that are not intended. And we've had experience over the decades of making sure that that's the case. And what we want to do is inspire confidence in people completing the, the census questionnaire not have them fear completing it. And so we're hoping that what we do is win this lawsuit, remove a very biased question from the census questionnaire, and then do everything we can to get people to participate. Because while we're concerned right now about the issue of adding a question about citizenship, we also can raise any number of concerns in the way the Trump administration has handled the preparation for the census to be conducted in 2020. They are far behind and they are far under-resourced to do this the right way. And in the minds of many, they're intentionally uh, placing themselves in a position where they cannot do the job well. Let me uh, call attention to uh, a recent example of, of the same concern you just articulated. Uh, last year, you know, with, with no proof or evidence of massive voter fraud, the president found it necessary to create a, an advisory commission, commission on election integrity, right, what we call the, the Voter Fraud Commission. That commission's first action, even before they met, was to request the personal information of every voter in America. 
Republican and Democratic secretaries of state around the country refused to provide that data because we felt it was an overreach. And when people register to vote, they provide that data for voter registration purposes, not for uh, other use. Between those objections and lawsuits, that commission ended up disbanding. So as an example of this admission can try, but when responsible public officials do not allow for the misuse or abuse of people's data, we can protect the integrity of those process. So I, I point to that as, as a victory when folks stand up and can only hope that that would again apply uh, in terms of the census information being used or abused uh, for unintended purposes. I'll let you go and change the first part, and I'll try to answer. Okay. <coughs> sí, bueno, lo, lo que estamos haciendo hoy es siguiendo la lucha en contra de la pregunta de, de ciudadanía que sea incluida en el censo del, del 2020. Faltan dos años para restaurar la confianza entre el gobierno y el pueblo, porque es bastante importante que todas las personas, todos los residentes de este estado y de este país uh, participen en el centro del 2020. ¿Qué, qué puede perder California? I'm sorry. ¿Qué puede perder California? Sí. ¿Qué puede perder? Ya, ¿Qué puede yeah. perder okay. políticamente hablando? Y, y la segunda parte de la pregunta era ¿cuál? ¿Cuál otro estado? ¿O cuál otro estado? Ya. Ya, ya. Ya. Sabemos que hay otros estados que también están contemplando eh, entregar demandas contra el gobierno federal porque muchos estados tienen bastantes residentes que son migrantes y eh, esperamos ver también el apoyo de otros estados en esta, esta lucha en contra de las acciones del de presidente Trump. Queremos mandar el, el mensaje bien claro a nuestra comunidad querida migrante que es importante participar en el censo, que el censo no es igual que la migra. Este es un proceso que nos brinda recursos a nuestras comunidades, que nuestros hijos, que en muchas ocasiones nosotros tenemos familia que vive en lugares que no, donde no hay muchos recursos. Este no es el tiempo de, de, de dañar la comunidad en, en no brindar esos recursos a la comunidad porque uno no es contado. El censo es bien importante y participar es sumamente importante. Y es para nosotros darle la confianza a cualquier persona, migrante o no migrante, que puede participar en el censo sin riesgarse en perder su privacidad. En cuanto... Políticamente, el precio político que podría poner California. No hay duda, como dijo el señor Padilla, California tiene más migrantes que cualquier otro estado y podemos perder más en términos de recursos. El dinero que nosotros brindamos al gobierno federal por medio de nuestros impuestos, si no, hemos, no somos contados, ese dinero que contribuimos cada día al gobierno federal no re, retorna, no regresa a California si uno no tiene un conteo de todo el pueblo que vive aquí en California. Por eso es sumamente importante que uno participe en el censo. Y es para nosotros, eh, el señor Padilla, para mí y los líderes de California, de luchar en la corte para defender el derecho de tener un conteo que es no solo privado, pero es seguro en, en las preguntas que, que se hacen a cualquier persona aquí en el país. We will take every action we need to do uh, to make sure that we protect the interests of the people of our state. We last night submitted the lawsuit. We will then move forward with whatever actions we need to. Uh, it would be premature to, for me to tell you that we're going to take a particular action until we're ready to, to announce that. End of the month is the deadline, and um, 
and there's a process by which uh, the the census questionnaire must be uh, confirmed and then the process of laying out the elements to take account of the nationwide process of getting people out there and participating. Um, it's a massive undertaking, and so there are many steps in the process. We're, make, we're gonna do everything we can to make sure that our lawsuit in that process fits in to make sure that when a questionnaire is established, it's established in a way that makes everyone want to participate, not exclude people. And which courts does it file with? We filed it here in the uh, District Court of Northern California. Okay, and then um, the, you have a number of other lawsuits against the Trump administration where you've joined with attorney generals from other states. Is California playing solo on this right now, or do you have other attorney generals that will be joining you in this lawsuit? We've been in conversation with a number of other states and attorneys general in those states about the census. Um, as you can imagine, the circumstances that each state faces on the census are somewhat unique, and there's no state like California when it comes to the issue of an undercount based on immigrant families not participating. And so while there may be some similarities, uh, we believe that California stands in a way um, apart from other states in, in the uh, intensity of the risk that we face should a undercount occur as a result of the citizenship questionnaire. And so while we will work with our partner states uh, on this issue of defending an accurate census count, uh, we decided and we were ready to move immediately. We've been preparing for this because we'd heard all the rumors, we saw where this was going, and so we saw no reason to wait. And we want to make it very clear to Washington, D.C., that just because they act, they shouldn't think that we won't react. We're, we're ready, and we filed last night. Does that mean that you had a lawsuit ready to go? Like, were, was there a draft ready to submit? We filed within five hours of their announcing their decision. We've been preparing for this. We have been in contact with the Department of Commerce. We have submitted comment to the Department of Commerce in the previous months, explaining our, our great uh, fear of the possibility that they would move forward with the citizenship question. Uh, we've, it's been no secret to the federal government that we in a number of states had serious concerns about uh, any decision to move forward with a citizenship question. And so it shouldn't be surprised that we were prepared when they did make the announcement that we were prepared to sue. Fight back on the citizenship question number one. Uh, still implore upon Congress and the administration to fully fund or better uh, the census for the next two years. We're making up for lost time here. It has been underfunded deliberately for the last couple of years. So they're behind schedule on preparations for the 2020 census. Uh, the administration can and should appoint a widely respected permanent director of the census because we're lacking one uh, as we speak. Uh, and yes, we can support the governor's inclusion of a, a line item in the state budget for census outreach uh, and awareness for the next couple of years and uh, work in conjunction with the nonprofit sector, employers, foundations, anybody and everybody uh, to ensure a uh, complete count in California in 2020.